was the ticket price, the ransom price for us to go free from every ailment, every curse, every sickness, every disease, every kind of sin. It was sin that brought this thing in and it is the righteousness of God that will drive it out. Isn't that right? You can be free. Come on, let's give God some praise. for joining us today. It's our continual prayer that something has blessed your heart or even changed your life as you listen. It's our vision to share the healing love of Jesus Christ with all who will hear. Would you consider helping us through partnering with us through your giving? Your gift of any amount will help share the gospel of Jesus Christ through this broadcast, Healing the Brokenhearted. And as a special thank you for your gift of $20 or more, we will send you a copy of The Healing Station. Please visit our website at ApostleLarryHearing.com or you can find us on social media. Thank you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But when God made me understand the root causes of certain attitudes that was there and it's like he said but when you come to me and a lot of those he's healed but when you come to me and I heal you of those things now the sting and the pain is no longer there but you can't stop there because there are some reasonings and attitudes surrounding all of that pain are you hearing what I'm saying so now he said it's up to you I've set you free so now I had to Get into this word and see truth. I had to see truth of what it was, not, not based on what I perceived to be and my experience in life, because up to that point, I was operating by my experience. You hear what I'm saying? I was operating by my experience, and I justified it. I felt I was doing right because I didn't understand the root causes of some of my behavior patterns. So, now this, he's walking me through and helping me to understand. This is just saying. And so, he said, so your need to be a little better or be a firm was there, all there, based on the trauma. So, back to my mom now. My mom uh, was whipping me, and I knew that if I didn't soon cry, I'm in for, I'm in for it for a while. <laughs> She was just going to continue to whip me because the old folks had this thing where they tried to be grown. They tried to be managed. He ain't going to cry. They'd be tough, you know. So that's how some of them saw it. So knowing this about my mother, I said, Lord, tell her I'm trying to cry. <laughs> but it wouldn't come out. But something had happened to me. That embarrassment had happened to me. And something entered me that wasn't healthy. And so finally... Everything went blank, white. She would just kept whipping me. You can't cry. Oh, you managed. You and all this was happening, and I was like, God, I, please tell I'm trying. To, I can't cry. I don't know what it is. And and so all of a sudden, everything went blank, white. And I, before I knew it, I was just swinging. Oh, just lost it. And I and after that, lifted whatever it was. I began to understand what had just happened. I just began to swing at my mother. And in utter embarrassment, I just fell right on the ground. And the Lord began to show me, and I'm using my own experience now, so that we all can understand. So, as a result of that, the guilt now, because what my parents taught me, that was, it was like Bible because it was drilled. And then there were godly parents. So I had violated something that I should never have done in my little mind. You know what I'm saying? 
So now there is guilt as a little old boy. And it was so bad. I remember going over to my cousin's house and my relatives and my mom and dad was inside. And as they were inside just carrying on talking, I was so feeling so guilty and afraid that they were going to tell my aunts and uncles and my grandmother what a bad person I was. So I went inside the house and I left playing with my cousins, stuck in the house, and in the room next door to where they were, I sat in a chair and just sat there waiting to see if they were going to talk about this little nine-year-old boy before my relatives. That's how bad guilt was. So I grew up and grew up to a certain age here, and so I was not aware acutely of the level of guilt that I had been facing. But guilt followed me and followed me, and it also made me afraid that God would punish me if I did something wrong. All of this transferred right into my relationship with God even after I got saved. And so I would devote myself with everything that I had within me, trying to keep from ever disappointing him or, and, and to the point that he would be displeased. Now, the last part of that was this. When I was 20, I ran, this was the last trauma that I experienced. That trauma was with my dad. Now, this same thing that entered when I was a little boy, I wasn't delivered because I knew nothing about it. I didn't know how to get delivered. And so I uh, just kind of rebelled against my dad in a few words and said, uh, he said, you all, you all just stay home from now on. And I was 20 and just coming home for a few days in college. And I just walked away and said, I, I'm not going to do that. And all of a sudden, there was a rage. <laughs> I mean, I thought he was Hulk, you know. He went berserk, you know. And <laughs> So now here I'm a little, I'm 20 years old and my dad has lost it, you know. And, and so now in my, I'm going to my room there and, and so I, I, uh, I, it was like, I don't know, I don't know where that came from, why that came out, I did nothing about it. So anyway, got in my room and I was mad and upset, and, but my mom and dad's room were right next to mine. And I heard dad, I had upset that man so bad because none of his children had ever done that. But this was the second time whatever the sacred cow was, I violated. And now I felt there was no hope. I had done something that couldn't be changed. I had violated those things that were most sacred to them. So now and there's more guilt. And then I started having asthma. Are you hearing me? There's some what they call psychosomatic conditions that come about not just because of physical, but I started having asthma. Up to that point, I didn't have no asthma. You know, my brother had it. But at that point, because of the guilt, and one of the consequences or symptoms of, of uh, guilt is asthma. That's one of them. And so there was... Uh, I had rebelled against dad, I had rebelled against mama, and now I'm walking, and uh, even when I took, come to God, I couldn't figure out why that, I just kept wanting to just, could never be satisfied. I, I needed so much, so mi much affirmation from God all the time, and I, it's like I'd read and read and read, and, and he would bring me to Romans and justification and all those things. But, but, and he told me one time, he said, get it, I want you to get it in the book of Romans chapter 3 and through 8, and I want you to read it and read it until it gets in your spirit. But I, did, I didn't understand, I heard, and I, but, but he was trying to deal with this guilt. And it was generational, all right? Although mine happened like that, the generational part, yeah, I can't go into detail, but my father had guilt and my grandfather. So what are you saying? I'm saying... Through that trauma, I was an adult. But that trauma, the childhood 
reasoning kept me right there, although I was an adult and of age and size, and I could not reason and give people the benefit of the doubt like I would have had I dealt with that trauma. But I didn't know any better. I didn't know how to deal with it. So when God brought us, brought this healing, he began to take us through this. And so there's some people here today that you can uh, 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 understand where I'm coming from. And um, there's the, another example, and I'll do this, and then we're going to bring this to a conclusion. Abuse. When there's abuse, uh, sexual abuse, a person's value, their self-esteem, their privacy, and their body has been compromised. And because the abusers, if they're authority figures or loved ones or caregivers, caregivers, the child's sense of safety has been short-circuited. And they are rendered powerless. Now there's a lot of trauma, but I'm giving you two of those now and hope, with hopes that if you face certain traumas that you'll understand the point that we're making is how they can uh, try to shape a person in things that happened to them in the past unless, one, they get healed, two, they begin to reprogram. I'm, I'm using that term. Reprogram, reprocess, right? Because whatever data is inside, in my understanding, that's how I'm going to live. A person may say, you need to do this and do this. But because that's the way I'm programmed, right? Until I get. What Paul says, transformed by renewing my mind. So it tells me how important the thinking is, right? Take a reap a thought or, 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 or sow a thought and reap a behavior or an action, right? It is so important. This is why God says, you've got to get in my word. I want to transform you. But some of the things, prayer is very, very good, but some things you got to get this mind renewed, right? Because those traumas, those ways of thinking, and those perceptions are our reality, right? They're not God's reality, but they may be our reality, right? So God is all in the business of changing us, changing us. No matter what my father did, no matter what my mother did, it, it, you know, that's not me. I am who God says I am. But I need to understand that, right? And I need to embrace it as truth, right? If you continue in my word, then you're my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Freedom comes through truth, knowing who we are in God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so God was just helping me to see and walking me through this thing and showing you. Because, you know, you, you, you preach certain things and you said, okay, Lord, I hear what you're saying and da, 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 I believe it to a certain length. But then when I began to apply it to my own life, I could experience God begin to visit me gently and just minister to me. I said, wow, you know what? So the more knowledge that I have concerning situations, the more the grace of God that can come. And the peace of God. It is so marvelous. But let me stop and pause and give you just acknowledge and glorify the Savior that I'm talking about. God has been so good. He has been so good. I tell you, what I was going through and God was helping me to see and healing me, standing right there with me, wouldn't leave me. When I was failing, when I was crying out, he right there. He just wouldn't leave me. God, hallelujah, is our refuge, saints. Nobody can compare to this God. He is awesome. And he can love you when you don't love yourself. My God, hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He's a wonderful Savior. Oh, glory. Uh, 
Hallelujah. He's been very good to me. You say, have you gone through some pain? Yeah, I have quite a bit. But God has been good to me. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Would I trade him? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I haven't found nothing that can do for me what God did for me. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. There's a song that says, I recommend Jesus. Above anything in this world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You've just been too good to me. Hallelujah. Oh, I could tell you some stories about God's goodness toward me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, my first wife died some eight years ago. And uh, I had a couple of pastors. They come to me and say, they had a friend, pastor, his wife died, he left the ministry, left his family and everything. And so they was encouraging me, don't leave your family, don't leave the ministry. But you know what I wanted to say? Ain't no danger. <laughs> Ain't no danger. <laughs> Look, he's all I got. And somebody that will stick with me through my ugly, through my weakness, through my failures, through my sin. No, 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 no. You ain't got to worry about me. <laughs> no, sir. Hallelujah. God is a good God. Right then I said, I ain't got nowhere else to go. I don't know what you're talking about. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Ooh, glory. <sighs> yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus is the best thing that can ever happen to a human being. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Nothing in this world can bring you the kind of life and joy the peace and freedom that God brings. So if you're here today, I want to say to you that if God speaks to you during the message about certain things and pattern behavior, patterns that may be childless in your life and you're wondering where they came from or he may be taking you back just remember this he healed me he'll certainly heal you because he is not a respect of persons hallelujah and I know many of you that are here God brought some wonderful healing but there may be someone here today that said I heard this preacher you know in your testimony and uh, but I don't know what God will do for me but I want to tell you something. The scripture says the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. God can keep up with you. He knows who you, how you feel. He knows what's going on inside, right? And because he put spirit in man. God will do for you what you cannot do for yourself. And he wants us to know how much he loves us. We go through things and some of the traumas and things, the result of the traumas and the passed down and ancestral curses, uh, all that stuff God want to break. All of it. Because he came to set us free. And when God, Christ, died on the cross, that was the ticket price, the ransom price. For us to go free from every ailment, every curse, every sickness, every disease, every kind of sin. It was sin that brought this thing in. And it is the righteousness of God that will drive it out. Isn't that right? You can be free. Come on, let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God is good to us. 
My soul want to praise him. God is good. And if you don't yet know he's good, know this. Stay with him. Just stick with him. Don't let, don't let go. Stay with him. And you'll see. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, I tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. My heart is full because of God's goodness. He can't. You just can't talk about him too, too much before something starts happening to you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Ah, the little wheel starts to turning on the inside. Glory to God. Because he lives in praise. Isn't that right? God makes himself at home when you adore him, worship him. Honor him. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for your kindness. I've tried to deliver your word as clear as I know how. Lord God, using my own life experience, the things that you taught me, and many of the healings, Lord, I realize that I'm not there all the way, but I'm just sharing the experiences that you that I had with you, Lord, with hope that somebody else's life will be touched. I pray because you're right in the midst of us now. No limit to what you want to do in our midst. Touch some life, Father. Touch someone by way of television, Lord. Let them know that you're real and you're alive and those hard things that they're suffering and emotional bondages that they can't seem to break. Let them know, Lord God, through the word and by your visitation that you'll change it for them, Lord God. Nothing shall be impossible with God because all things are possible with God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We come to you, Jesus. Acknowledging our inabilities, our weaknesses, Lord. But you are strong, mighty, and good. You give us hope, Lord. And we thank you for the people that are listening by way of television. And we thank you for the body here today. Lord, begin to move through this congregation now. Having your way. Do what we can't do, Father. If you're close enough to just grab a hand of somebody, if you will do that right now. I ask my wife to come. She will come. We're going to pray a prayer of faith. Hallelujah. No oh, glory to God. Our Heavenly Father, it is a delight to come on behalf of your people. Yes. It is such a joy to know that you live. Lord. And you reign, Lord God. And that you love us. Yes. With perfect love. Yes. Stretch forth your hands while we are joining hands in agreement. Minister unto whomever you want to minister to you. Let the healing power of God lay your hands on someone today someone that's been struggling for a while and they need hope Lord meet them Father 
by your Holy Spirit. You did it for me. I know you'll do it for them. Heal some traumatic experience, Lord. Some unresolved conflict, Father. Someone that may have tried to forgive, but the hurt was so deep. Healed by your Spirit, Lord. And everything will be all right. Send help from your precious sanctuary. Oh, God. Oh, the Holy Spirit is, is moving. He's moving. Do it, Lord, for your glory. Set free now. Give hope now to your people. Those that may be struggling in the area of what we minister, be released now to work your will and your purpose. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. I've exposed myself, Lord, that others may be helped. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory. Bless those by way of television, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, we commit to you now. Every person, everyone that is under the sound of our voice, let your healing love flow now. In the name of Jesus Christ. We're giving you praise. Give a flash, a vision, a flashback, a word of knowledge. Open our understanding. Show us now where our perceptions were not lined up with you. Show us, Master, where we have done things that were contrary to a mature person for so long. Show us now and show us the root of it. Forgive and heal and as we forgive. In the name of Jesus Christ. We'll honor you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Let's thank the Lord together. Thank you, Father. I saw your 